Hi, I'm Amy Jones. I'm here today with Melanie Rothschild. We've been in the photo studio all week shooting the step-by-step -step photos for her book that will be out with Northlight Books in the fall of 2014. Hi, Melanie. Hi. So why don't you start by telling us a little bit about your background? How did you get started doing what you're doing? Okay, I'll try to condense my whole life into 20 seconds. <laughs> okay. Um, Basically, I'm, I'm self-taught in art. Um, in school, I uh, majored basically in anthropology. It was a degree that was sort of a combination of anthropology and the arts. Um, but I was one of those people who thought I was just awful at art. I always mm -hmm. really like wanted to do stuff, but thought that I was just, just out of luck. Yeah. Um, and after I graduated from college, I guess I just sort of felt, you know, uh, relaxed enough <laughs> that I could just kind of play mm -hmm. and uh, gave myself a break to do something I really wanted to do which was um, just play with some different art things and I had because I had these all these references from the anthropology that I studied these design references in my head um, that was sort of what I used it was sort of a combination of those design references and just kind of the moxie of feeling like hey you know what this is my time to try and do this kind of stuff. Um, so I started playing around and uh, because of a family business I had access to lots and lots like hundreds and thousands of picture frames. Okay. And so I started just playing with them and, and making designs on them and I had also just um, had twins and um, I had lots and lots of pictures that I really wanted to frame. So I had my, my baby pictures of my kids and I had these frames and I, uh, the time, all the, all the things just sort of came together, all the roads came together. And I started um, making designs on these frames and took them to a local park show, okay. like a rotary show okay, yeah. for the weekend mm -hmm. and I bought a booth and I put them out and people started buying them. And that's kind of the very beginning of the story, and it, it, it turned into um, something that I did for over 15 years, and it became a wholesale business for me. Wow. And um, those frames really um, sort of guided me through finding myself and my own techniques as an artist. Okay. Um, and I never, I <coughs> never, I had a couple of art classes along the way here or there where I felt like I am the worst one in the class. I'm terrible. Um, and, sad. <laughs> and so I kind of found my way into doing these little, I call them guerrilla techniques that I okay. just kind of stumbled on and figured out on my own mm -hmm. from playing around. And then after having the frame business, which became pretty successful for several years I thought okay I should really take an art class now so I so I'm <laughs> legitimate and I right. know what I'm doing um, because if things are going this well and I haven't had a class if I take a class that'll really the possibilities are endless yeah <laughs> so I took a class and it was a painting class mm -hmm. and the first night we were told not to do all these things that I'd been doing. Um, not to mix acrylic colors, and I was told I needed more brushes in order to get all the you know, des desired effects that I was gonna need. And it, and it stunned me. I, 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 it was this huge moment for me because I felt like if I had taken this class years ago, mm -hmm. I never would have stumbled onto the path that's been so amazing for Brilliant. me and, and life-changing for me. Um, and so I, I started to realize how dangerous um, the wrong art class can be. Mm -hmm. There are certainly, I mean, there are fabulous art classes and, right. and fabulous art teachers. Um, I'm married to one, actually. Okay. <laughs> but um, but the, the wrong situation can really um, embed itself and mm -hmm. at least that was my experience, I think, and make you feel like you don't belong here. You might think you want to be at this party, but you're really not on the invitation yeah. list. Um, so my, my background is kind of um, being self-taught self and stumbling. Okay. Yeah. yeah. So you mentioned the frames, mm -hmm. but um, that sounds like it was a while ago. So what kind of artwork are you known for now? 
Okay. Um, the frames, it, it, there are a lot of steps along the way, so I'll okay. try to say them quickly. But after a while, the, the working on the narrow molding um, mm -hmm. felt confining, so I started sure. working on boxes that were a little bigger. Okay. And then I started working on tables that were a little bigger than that. <laughs> And um, then I had people ask if they could just buy the tabletops and the box tops. And I thought, yeah, hmm. but why? <laughs> and they said, well, we just want to hang them on the wall. And I thought, oh, my there it God. is. Yes, that's, that's what I really want to mm -hmm. do. So I started doing just paintings, things that just um, hung on the wall and served no other purpose in the world. They didn't hold anything. They right. didn't. Um, and I, so I started kind of moving from functional work to more, you know, what's formally called fine art. Mm -hmm. And I was accepted into a show. Uh, and I had a right, um, well, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to step back for a minute. Okay, okay. sure. Um, I was accepted into a show, and I started doing something where I was pouring paint onto, a, I don't work on canvas, I work on wood. It's okay. sort of from my my time doing boxes, boxes and frames. Yeah. And I like the way wood feels and you can you can take paint back if you don't want to do it with a bunch of paper towels. It's you know. very forgiving. It's very forgiving. So I um, had a day where I spilled almost a whole gallon of paint, which is just a huge mess. And like, where do you begin cleaning something like that up? So I, I thought, want to try. you know what? <laughs> the best what thing to do with this is just to leave it, mm -hmm. ignore it for the time being, and come back to it in several days when it's dry, and I'll just break off the chunks, and that'll be a lot mm -hmm. less messy. So I came back to it several days later and started chipping away at the end of it and started peeling it and expected it would just come off in handfuls. And instead, I started peeling it, and it just wasn't breaking apart and I just started peeling and peeling and peeling and I eventually got this like huge swath or <laughs> skin of paint that I was holding in my hands and it was this huge moment for me I, yeah. I knew it meant something I didn't know what I was going to do with it but I had no idea in fact of just how life changing mm -hmm. it would be um, so I was just really kind of giddy with the idea of being able to create these um, hides. Okay. And so I just started deliberately then pouring paint on non-porous surfaces like glass, plexiglass, okay. um, standing it up, letting it drip. You know, you've heard the oh, expression nice. waiting for paint to dry. Right. Just letting, you know, <laughs> watching it drip till it got to just the right moment. Um, and then laying it down, letting it dry for several days mm -hmm. again, peeling it up, and then suspending it on bars. And I did one nice. bar with strips hanging from it, and I want to do another. And I had them hanging one on top of the other. And I really liked the way they look hanging next to each other. And so I did a third bar. And then I just kept going, doing more and more mm -hmm. bars. Um, and what happened then is for this show that I was accepted into, I had to write an artist statement. <laughs> and that was this huge, another, oh my God, what am I going to do moment because so many times I've been to galleries and shows, and I'm going to say something now that maybe is a horrible thing to say, but, you know, past 50, I sort of gave myself the gift of <laughs> being comfortable saying some of these things. I just so often feel like I don't understand them. Yeah. To me, they often feel meaningless. They often sound a lot like ones I've seen before, mm -hmm. and, I, and I don't get them. And I didn't want to contribute to that. I didn't mm -hmm. want to write more things that other people probably weren't going to understand and that weren't. I wanted it to really mean something. And I thought about why. I didn't really understand the work I was doing or mm -hmm. why I was doing it. Or I knew I felt really passionately about it. Um, and so I started researching a little bit just online uh, about creativity. Okay. and what drives people and um, I got really interested in it and wound up going back to school and got a um, graduate degree in the study of creativity um, because at that point I'd been doing art for too long and had figured yeah. out my own weird techniques right. <laughs> that I really loved and um, 
at that point didn't really want anybody else telling me how I should right. be doing it. Um, but I was kind of interested in the why and the how mm -hmm. and ha why that happens or sometimes doesn't happen in certain cases. Okay. Um, so there you have it. All right. Now you know a lot <laughs> about me. So all of that, the, the dripping paint, you have a name for that? I call mm -hmm. the paint that I hang from these pieces of metal, these metal mm -hmm. forms, I call it paint and air because there's no canvas involved. Right. It's just paint and the air that dries it. So that was just how I sort of started describing it. Okay. And then it felt like, oh, that's, that's what it's going to be called. And it all stemmed from an accident or a mistake. It stemmed from this mistake. Yeah. And what was interesting is when I went to school and was studying mm -hmm. the, about the study of creativity, one of the things that's discussed in um, in training people to feel comfortable with being more creative. Um, and I will just say that the study of creativity, the, the formal study mm -hmm. of creativity as a social science, happens very much outside of the sphere of um, the art world. Okay, It happens okay. In, in a context, a social science, which is about like innovation. Mm -hmm. um, and one of the directions that they give is, don't worry about making mistakes. And I started to think over time um, that, and, and, and people talk about the tools of their trade, and I was thinking to myself, wow, the tool of my trade is, is mistakes, because you know I'd had this mm -hmm. epiphany with the spilled paint, and a lot of the work that I did with my frames and in, with my paintings, I'd use a lot of dots, which I originally okay. started doing to cover up mistakes, <laughs> or what I thought were it mistakes. Works. And, and I realized, oh my gosh, for me, mistakes are really um, guideposts that have led me to ideas that I mm -hmm. never would have come up with had I not been trying to recover from the right. mistake. So this direction of um, don't worry about mistakes, I began to take really seriously and mm -hmm. see what a huge piece of the creative arc it is. But I also realized that just saying to people, oh, don't worry about making mistakes, is kind of meaningless because we're so, yeah. it's so deeply embedded in us Absolutely. not to make mistakes. So the idea of trying to somehow really um, explain or get people to understand how, how mistakes, you know, the word gets a really bad reputation, mm -hmm. I'll say. But mistakes are much more complex than just you know things we avoid or right. love all the time, you know. Yeah. And so um, I've written about it, and I actually in school I did a little I did a documentary about mistakes and um, kind of knowing which ones matter, right? And yeah. and how to think about them and react to them and understanding that it's really part of why we're here. I mean, mm -hmm. sort of the whole, the whole dance of evolution is kind of mistakes and recovery yeah. and, and, and reworking and um, finding the pieces that work in the mistake mm -hmm. and, um, you know, refining it. Okay. Yeah. So that sort of brings us to the book that you're writing for Northlight. Yeah. So why don't you tell us um, a little bit about that and what your goal for the book is? Okay. Um, I'm really excited about it. Yeah, so am I. And uh, really thrilled <laughs> that Northlight was able to see the, you know, it's not just a, a how-to book. Right. And it's not just talking about creativity and innovation. Um, there's, a, there's a marriage mm -hmm. there. And so in the book, I hope to maybe explain to people what I talked about before, how mistakes are... You know, I think we use the wrong language for it. You know, if we called it something else, um, I think people would be more comfortable and um, be able to look at mistakes as some kind of uh, on a varying scale instead of all mistakes are no good. Mm -hmm. So, the idea of um, helping people um, maybe broaden their perspective of how they think about mistakes and get um, make people feel comfortable and that they have a, that they belong. At the at the table, the art table, right. if they want to be there, um, and then I have some steps in the book that are mm -hmm. not meant to um, 
be followed strictly, but as a place, as just some kind of a way of saying, this is a big sandbox for playing. And here, come step in the sandbox. This is what I'm doing with the mud over here. Mm -hmm. You can try doing this too. And maybe you want to do the same thing. Maybe you want to do something different. But this is a way to start. Yeah, I think that's um, one of my favorite chapters in the book is the one where you're encouraged to go play. And you get this, you get all kinds of different, what look like really simple art techniques. But when you start to play with them and put them together in different ways and not follow them exactly step by step, but figure out how to make them your own, that it's so much fun. Well, play is really, uh, once again, it's a word that I think kind of trips us up. Mm -hmm. But for an artist, play is really serious stuff. That's how yeah. you find ideas. And there's, um, it's, it's separate and apart from skills, or art okay. skills. In other words, um, you know, drawing, the ability to do realistic drawing is often seen as sort of a big um, dividing line between the talented and the untalented. That's the way I feel. Right. I can't draw. Right. I must not be an artist. Exactly. <laughs> and I think a lot of people feel that way. And, you know, people say, you know, oh, I can't draw a straight line. You know, you hear that a lot, mm -hmm. a lot. And um, so often when I've done shows with my frames or with paintings, so many times people come up to me and say, oh my God, I love art, but I'm just terrible at it. As if they yeah. have proof, you know, and they yeah. can usually give proof about some class that they had. And, you know, that's why I always say these art classes can be very dangerous places because yeah. they really make people feel you're done. Right. That's it. Um, so in the, in the book, I try to sort of invite people back mm -hmm. um, and, and explain also that there's a difference between skills, um, art skills as such, and developing a creative muscle. And to me, a creative mm -hmm. muscle is, um, well, I, I feel that artists make the most of their available resources. So part of your resources, in addition to maybe you know your stick and your paint and your thread, is, I mean, the biggest resource you have is the way you think. And if you're able to meander, and if you're able to think of something in a different way mm -hmm. and recover from it, and just what a person brings to their art making um, is is the way they express themselves as an artist as opposed to the way they adhere to a set of directions. That sounds like a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to the book. Me too. Um, then if you can see on the table, I don't know if we can look at this, but this is one of the um, one of the techniques that is shown in the book. Um, and we actually have a short demo video that you can watch um, to see this technique in action, which involves throwing thread that has paint on it and then talking about reframing your perspective by moving the paper or looking at just a section of this. Yeah, throwing, um, using thread to paint is just one of the kind of wacky techniques yeah. I came up with. And I, you know, I put a stick in the can of paint, mm -hmm. um, and I came upon that be just because I was I wanted to try using thread to paint with, and I had no idea what to do, so I just like took thread and I was stuffing it in the paint, and <laughs> sounds it really messy. Came out as a, like I couldn't work with it, and then I just had the idea of adding the stick, and and I have put a lot of miles on a lot of thread mm -hmm. and paint, um, and so and it's just a technique I use of you know, throwing the painted thread. Mm -hmm. um, I think it, it shows a little easier with video than it does with right. with still photos. Um, so that's something that, well, there's a, a video that'll be a link, I guess, in the mm -hmm. book, even though there are some still photos of that probably yeah. in the book. But after we, after we did the practice piece, um, I realized this is a really good opportunity to talk about something that, um, it doesn't have to be just about thread, but the thread is a good example, right. um, which is just about how you come to look at things and your perspective and how you frame things. Mm -hmm. And so quite literally, um, I have these little paper frames. Right. Um, so it's a literal thing, but also kind of a metaphor for um, looking at things differently and reframing in your head and, 
and spinning things around and coming to it from a different perspective. Well, here was a little une unexpected surprise because yeah. it's now stuck to the table. Um, so this this is a really good example, in fact, in the in the book of how there are steps that mm -hmm. you can try, and then there's also conversation behind it about the thinking process, which, from my point of view, is really more important than any particular technique. Yeah. All right, thank you for joining us today. Um, you can find out more about Melanie's book at um, thenorthlightshop.com, and you can find out more about her artwork um, and see some examples of this in a more finished piece and how you can build the layers with all of her techniques at melanierothschild.com. Thanks for joining us.